Welcome everybody to Miguel's Garage. I got a, a great personality today. Matt from Sloppy Mechanics. This dude is doing some crazy stuff on the uh, on the Jeep, right? Yeah. Or, or cheap ish. I, I like to cheap say ish. economical not, hot riding. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> not. It's not. You know, nothing is too cheap. But some of the components people are surprised with the price point. But that's because we've tried cheaper stuff and it's not effective. So, yeah. so Matt, uh, you know, I'm sure people want to know a little bit about like, you know, what is the the Sloppy Mechanics and and this whole thing that, that you started. And maybe you want to say a little bit about yourself. And you were you were telling me before also that you have a a, a video that you put that put out on your on your channel just talking about this, right? Yeah. So I'll I'll make sure to put that on the link and and, and uh, broadcast that. Funny enough, last night since we have been getting like a lot of new viewers, uh, my wife and I made a video last night explaining more about what exactly sloppy mechanics is. Yeah. It's an hour long video highlighting on touching a lot, like all the subjects like we could think of just that keep coming up. So. People who are new to the channel can just watch that and go, oh, like they, they can understand it then, get yeah. a better grasp on what it is. And basically, like in a nutshell, what Sloppy Mechanics is, I, it's like a self-help encyclopedia, like wiki. And then on top of that, there's a video, like I make videos for when I do builds. I just build cars for fun and I test out like automotive myths and I try to do <laughs> I try to do things as cheap like, as possible. Like how much horsepower you can push out of Exactly, because people people think, people buy stuff like they spend uh, tons of money on head studs or like we were just versing about the 7M. Yeah. They'll spend all their money doing 2J everything when what they had was fine. Mm -hmm. You know, people people get caught up in like a like reality TV show world or they think that they have to sink a bunch of money in to get a result. And in reality, the, the harder we push the base parts themselves they last yeah so yeah. what's the point in swapping any of it Absolutely. Uh, i mean that's you know in a nutshell yeah, and i've been seeing the, the sloppy mechanics you just posted that not too long ago like hey if you're new here's a wiki page and, yeah and it's, there's a shitload of stuff in there yeah it's an amazing amount of which i try to update it every time anyone has questions so yeah. if any questions ever arise you can easily search there and the you know the best results are already Compiled. Yeah, cool. So how did the whole thing start? Was it just like um, an idea or? A... Yeah, it's just, it was honestly me and my friends being idiots with cars. Yeah. <laughs> like before Cash for Clunkers, we would get $150. My buddy worked at a dealer, yeah. one of the Ford dealers, and people would trade in like an 86 grand marquee. It was worth nothing. They would sell it to us for like $150. Yeah. And we would drive it through fields and run it into them. We'd get two of them, run them into each other. <laughs> <laughs> and then if the motor ran decent, we would spray it with nitrous. And then uh, my buddy owns that dyno on Airport Road, which now I do tuning on like part-time for fun. And we would go over there and be idiots. And that's what most of the older videos are, is just people are like, what the fuck is this? You know, like it's just us being total idiots with junk cars and everything else. And uh, it got to a point where we started, we started just messing around with nitrous. Back in the day, nitrous oxide was very cheap. My friend has a filling station, an air gas account, because he's a fire protection business. So we would get nitrous bulk, super wow. cheap, fill our tanks ourselves, put like three bottles through a piece of shit car, and it would be fun. But what we started to learn was, you know, people are very intimidated with nitrous, but we started to learn how easy it was. And then we were doing ridiculous things and making like 200 extra horsepower. And people are like, how do you do that? Well, we started to learn like how to most effectively use nitrous on like almost any application and cheap because people are like, it's $700 for a nitrous kit. And we're like, no, you hook it up to this and you do this. And, and that eventually bled into like rental cars with nitrous on them and just stupidity. And then uh, it blew up into, uh, we were watching stuff on YouTube, like people were doing LS swaps and stuff. And we're like, we could do that. Yeah. So we just started and started learning it all on our own. And that's where it is today is yeah. me giving away all the info we learned on our own over the last 06. So. Man, 11, 11 years, 12 11, years. 11 years? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't remember exactly when during 06, but yeah, yeah hell of a span. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, typically the first car is, is, is an interesting uh, subject because it, it's either a hand down or yeah, somebody that you, for you know, sure. just, you know, like uh, I just shared the, last week, I was talking to uh, somebody and I just shared what my first car was. It was a piece of crap Nissan Sentra. It was just like, just, Horrible, horrible. So, so what was your first car? My first car was a 91 Chevy Lumina four-door. Oh, that's not too bad. It had the ladder V6, rack in the back, right? V6. the 3100. That's, that's high class. I neutral bomb that bitch every day leaving high school. <laughs> Sometimes I would do uh, J-turns 
Yeah. And a couple times I folded the tire off the rim. The body would roll so Whoa. bad. The rim would, I had scratches on the rim from Jay turning. <laughs> it would fold the tire over and rub the rim and, on and the not, ground. And not pop? Every now and then it would pull the bead off. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and we would do that spray and light it and <laughs> reseat the bead and stomp the fire out. Yeah. And uh, that was a hell of a car. And honestly, I got that from like a family friend. Yeah. Because, I mean, I worked at like Weiss Kings, I had no car, I saved up my money, and uh, that was an amazing car. It took all that abuse, it never had a single problem, it was a beast in the snow. Any of those, uh, that body type GM with the well, super heavy like iron the, the motor. Nine, what year you said? It was a 91. 91. So that's, yeah, okay. And it was funny because it was like the, it had the dash, and then down in the footwell there was no divider. So the passenger could floor the car. <laughs> So, hey, uh, can you uh, cruise control, please? I got yeah. people would come over and like fucking whack the gas pedal and stupid stuff like that. And eventually, someone T-boned it. Ran a, uh, I was coming through a three-way stop on Tillman by Chris's diner. There's that three-way stop, and someone was stopped waiting for everyone to do the three-way stop. And a guy blew around them in a Dodge truck and hit the front of the car and totaled it. And I'm I, like, I, oh. I have, now that you say that, I got a friend of mine that he's had like almost every other car he's had is because he totaled the one before. <laughs> Nice. So that's that the Luna, that's the one that you kind of had to like rotate the engine a little bit to, to do the spark plugs in the back. Uh, yeah, they were pretty far down yeah. in the back. I never did spark plugs. No, no fucking way. No, I never did any maintenance on it yeah. at all. What a great car. Just yeah. drove it. Those, those were the best. You just hammer, have fun, and then just, you know, dispose of it. So, so how did you get into this whole LS addiction? That's, that's kind of like what I call it, like, you know, the LS addiction. It's like you're you almost specialized in, in the LS motor and right now. If you use it the most, channel, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's that, I would say 90% of what we do is, and even now, even people that watch it are like, could you maybe just do something else? <laughs> you know, it's, but at some point, uh, I guess the, the big thing is when you want to do like cost-effective build, which pretty much almost any, everybody is, it's, they're like, what do I get for my money? Mm -hmm. And the amazing part about the LS motor is, Tom Nelson has a video too, I can send you that link. Okay. And it says, why is the LS engine so is good? Is that the, from Nelson engines? Nelson oh, okay. Racing Engines, okay. NRE. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he made a video about it like a, a year ago or something like that. And he actually uh, name drops me oh, three cool. quarters of the way through the video. Well, you know, so the other day I'm, I'm, I'm listening to uh, Matt Farah and, and some other uh, guys. Smoking and Tire or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, the Smoking Tire and, and this, the, not Matt, the other guy says, oh, there's a guy in, uh, in PA that he does... He does like crazy stuff with the LS engines, uh, and he's making like a bunch of power. Uh, so he, they, they're name dropping oh. you everywhere. Yeah, it's funny. I guess it's hard to ignore at this point. <laughs> I th it'll always be. It feels uh, I'm unsettled with any sort of uh, recognition and fame. Like it kind of it puts me in a <laughs> weird. People with, uh, like my demeanor will change. Yeah. People will be like, "You're so," and I'm like, "Oh, I just don't. No, I don't yeah. like that. I'm yeah. not the first, and I won't be the last. Uh, don't put me on a pedestal. Yeah. I'll disappoint you." And it's true, Matt is one of the coolest down-to-earth guys. <laughs> I mean, every time I see him, he's you know wearing shorts and and uh, sandals, yeah, and, and the fucking and summer, you know yeah. like <laughs> hammering cars on the dyno. And <laughs> so that's cool. So so how did that whole LS engine come about? Was it like a, a just out of luck, or how did you? Well, we, we just started seeing people do the same thing, and in uh, people might not know, like I don't know, in the Northeast where we are, Chevy trucks. Like people snow plow with them and do other stuff mm -hmm. with them, and this area destroys trucks. Yeah. yeah so them, yeah. there's a, such an abundance of destroyed Chevy vehicles that the motors are worth nothing. And the vans too, though they have the same engine. All of it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's like everything from '99 to now has that Gen 3 or Gen 4 engine. Yeah. And then what's crazy is these motors don't really have any inherent problems. And all the hardware is like all the seals are reusable, like they're baton, like they're the aluminum crush with the rubber seal. Mm. You take the like you take oil pan off, put the oil pan right back on. The gasket's riveted to the oil pan, and like it, some stuff might seep, but they have a quarter million miles on them. Mm. Like we reuse the head gaskets. All the bolts are similar. Are metal head gaskets or yeah. Well, older older LS motors had a composite, mm -hmm. but almost. I would say 90 some percent of them are MLS, multi-layer steel. Mm. Yep. And then like, if you've worked on other motors where you pull the intake off and coolant goes everywhere, that doesn't exist on an LS, like small block Ford or Chevy or 
the coolant goes through the intake and you have to deal with that. Right, and right. The, the motor design itself is so intelligent. And on top of that, it's not just reliable and well designed. It makes a lot of power. The cylinder heads factory that are worth nothing flow tons of, like uh, my truck has a completely stock long block with a cam and springs and it's making a thousand tire. Hmm. Like it's absurd, like yeah. how far you can go with it. And just to re like how reusable it is, like I bent, a I bent some of my rods I just like pulled them out, shoved some other rods and I had laying around, fired it right back up. Like, it's ridiculous, like the punishment uh, they will take. But I mean, it's, it's funny because years ago when the LS came out, people were like, well, 500 horsepower is the max. Yeah. Like you, you can't put a blower on your Camaro, you'll just blow the car and, I mean, if you, if you go to any track pretty much any day, uh, the cars that are taking the most abuse and, and are just okay and no issues are uh, Corvettes and Porsches. I mean, they're yeah. just like, Porsche is total workhorse motor, but yes, the yeah. the the price point for the it's Porsche funny. entry and a C5, yeah. like my friend that does, uh, my buddy Cody that does all of that road racing is like, you a C5 is completely unbeatable. Mm -hmm. He's like 400 degree oil temp like all day. Like you can just race it until your oil pressure is almost zero and park it till the oil cools off and go out and flog the shit out of it again. You know, it's, it, within reason as long as everything yeah. is safe. But uh, the tune-up and everything isn't ragged edge. But that's that's the biggest thing is we go to build something else and we're like, oh, it's fifteen hundred dollars for this, a used motor. It's whatever for this. It's what, and it just starts. And you're like, man, I can get a complete LS motor. I know everything will work. Five hundred bucks, and it comes with a harness and accessories, and I can cut down the harness myself. Mm -hmm. The stock computer, like it's called a PO one from like ninety nine to 06. That'll run speed density. Like I had a mid nine second car stock computer. Wow. Like it's just everything laying in front of you is so capable already. Uh, that's the big allure. That's why we can't seem to leave them because we'll do something else. And then we're, you know, you start having issues and you're like, and that what's, what's insane is either cylinder head can go on either side of the car. Everything's ambidextrous. Oh really? Yes. I did not know that. The exhaust manifolds normally go back and down. You can, you can flip them and go and down and forward, or you can flip them again and go up and forward, or you can go back and forward. The intake manifold, ambidextrous, you can That's put cool. it backwards. Yeah. You can do like an air to water in the car and feed the intake from the firewall. So if you have a sand rail, you can flip the intake, or they swap Porsches now. Mm -hmm. They put LS motors and Porsches. If you notice in the cans, intake, I've seen a couple of cans yeah, with the, the back of the intake is in the front. Like, well, I I knew the intake because the uh, Factory Five, I think it's the GTM yeah. model, you use the Porsche transmission and you yeah, have to flip, flip the uh, yeah. So that that I knew, but I didn't know about all the other stuff. And all cool. those parts, like and a truck intake with a return fuel rail system, and I have a stock truck intake on my truck, and it's it doesn't seem to have any limitation on horsepower yet. Mm -hmm. And it's worth like twenty dollars. People throw them out. You can get them for free, like that. Like people spend so much money on an intake manifold, that's free. Yeah. And it's easy to remove, and it's easy to reach the bolts, and all, everything fits it, and yeah. it's ridiculous. That's almost every component of the motor is like that. You can just oh, I'm screwed. Oh no, I can just turn it upside down and put the bolts, all the factory bolts and gaskets back in. Oh yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> that's it. Ends up be, being that way. So the so the Colorado that you have now, mm -hmm. where you try to be very close to a thousand horsepower yeah, wheel twice now. basically have basically everything stock inside and it's disgusting it's a stock 4 lady e too yeah. it, it's a 4 8 4 lady e transmission yeah the automatic is out of a van it had 140,000 when i pulled it mm -hmm. and then the motor that's in the colorado now and so you haven't done anything to that it has it has like pressure modifications like the valve body was modified with the hd2 kit it's a hundred dollar kit from transgo same thing you have to do with like a th 400 totally stock it'll shift way too soft and everything else you do like internal cheap modifications. Some, some of them you can do for free, like drilling and putting bolts in, or you can just buy kits that have like appropriate spring and bleed. And what it does is it gives the transmission more pressure and more flow. It does like a dual feed. 
So the whole auto, like the Chevy automatics work off of a hydraulic circuit. So all it does is improves the hydraulic circuit that's wow. already there. That's but amazing. it's a completely, it had 140,000 on it. It's stock input shaft, stock, it's stock hardware, front to back, it has like some springs and valves in it, some holes that's drilled in it. Yeah, it's not like, people are like, oh, it has, it's modified trans. It has like some springs in it and a gasket and some holes drilled. And like, what about the drive shaft and everything else? The is drive shaft it? is uh, actually one of my YouTubers. I used to get drive shafts made by a trucking company. It's a steel three inch drive shaft, a heavy wall. And I always used to have associated trucking do it. Mm -hmm. A guy that watches my videos in like Massachusetts was like, oh, tell me the length and I'll send you a drive shaft. <laughs> and he did, that's what's in the Colorado right now. A YouTuber made my that's drive cool. shaft. Yeah. yeah, normally I spend about, I spend, people are like, oh, they make their drive shaft work. I spend like, I always drop like 300 bucks on a steel thick wall drive. I've never had a drive yeah. shaft come out of a car. So that's yeah. just something I, I, cool. I'm a couple times a year, people's drive shafts come out on the dyno and I've never had to have that happen. So I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's, that's pretty incredible. And I'm, I'm just like taking it all in. It's just, you're so knowledgeable about, you know, the, the motor and, and all the details about it. And you play so much with it. Yeah, I've touched all the parts. Yeah. That's like the big thing, like I said, and like what, what's, what is sloppy mechanics and explaining it is like, I'm obsessed with knowing everything for myself. I'm yeah. skeptical of it. Even if you like <laughs> Ryan, I've known since seventh grade. Somebody says, uh, yeah, you, you should do this, this and that. You go like, no, I'll, I'm I'll like, be sure. tell me why. Yeah. And then I'll test why. And then we'll see how smart you are. Like, right. that's just my, I've always been like, uh, sometimes people get annoyed, like they bring their car to the dyno and like, I'm standoffish and I'll be like, well, why? Well, why? And, they'll, yeah, yeah. and they'll be like, why do I have to answer you? And I'm like, maybe you did a whole lot of stuff for no reason. Yeah. Maybe the stuff you did is bringing you down instead of up. Mm -hmm. Cause every now and then we'll, we'll tune a car and they change stuff and they're like, well, it should be better. It should be better. And I'm like in the car world and in the IT world, the word should is very prevalent right, right. and it doesn't always make it better. You can, I've had people where they change a whole bunch of stuff and they're like, I've spent money. It's better down on power. Yeah. I'm like, something got screwed up in this combo. It's, it's not more effective for mm -hmm. the money. But, uh, another neat thing about the Colorado is it's a completely stock Ford Explorer rear end, really? $50 complete rusted Hulk stock oh, rear end a thousand horsepower stock ford explorer rear end it's funny you there's so many things you can find that seem useless like a ford explorer rear how did you come about that did you like well just it's a four it's the 88 platform uh -huh. that people use in fox bodies the drag race and the 88 is in some of like the ford rangers and other things uh in because the again it's just like an ls motor they made so many ford 88s they're worth nothing but they're good. It's a good plat. It's yeah. stock track lock. And you know, just the the whole thought behind how just much, use what's there. Yeah, it's how much stuff you've been able to get out of it. Just is making Colorado more appealing to me. The other yeah. that was the auction, <laughs> and I saw it. And, and just because of your truck, I'm I'm thinking. Uh, You're like I know what that vehicle's capable yeah, of. Yeah, right. It's right. been a very good platform, I have to say. Uh, I wasn't even really interested in building one at all. I was going to do a full size, like a 2500, and I wanted to do four wheel drive for fun. Mm. I know it's not as light and I know it would not be as fast, but the part of the appeal was I had never done a four wheel drive, but the issue again in this area is all four wheel drive, everything is destroyed or a million dollars. Right, right, right. And then my wife was like, just build a Colorado. And she just kept saying it and I kept looking, but really, so that came from, if you don't She's know, like, just build a Colorado. Jamie's right behind the camera. So that's why we're, we're kind of like talking to <laughs> her at the same time. <laughs> Two years of saying, can we build a Colorado. The issue really? was Colorado. Even so she's, so she's the smart one. Yes. Not, not this one here. Yes. <laughs> the issue was is Colorado's were like eight thousand dollars beat up. What? Like the platform was too new. People yeah. were just paying money for them. Mm -hmm. So I found that one with like dents and other stuff, but it was a two wheel drive, so it's not ruined. The frame is excellent. It just has some dents. Like someone was careless and drove into some things, and it has the less than desirable seal beam, old school looking front end. So I got it for like three. After tax tag and title, it was like 2,600, but then after everything added up, I have about three into just that, which is, which was hard for me to do because I'm like, I'm going to replace almost everything in this vehicle. I'm so used to buying like a $300 Fairmont. Yeah. And then just kind of, and I'm like, I'm at 10 times the amount already. <laughs> like I have a uh, economic anxiety already. I'm like, Oh, here goes my, cause I built cars that went low tens for 4,200 total. And I've learned so much since wow. then that I could do better than that. Mm -hmm. So now, do you think that you've gotten a lot more performance because it's lighter and whatnot? Or oh, the truck for sure is, yeah. is the, it's the most powerful thing I've ever built. And it's already gone faster in the eighth than my 960 Fairmont easily. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, it's just, it's it's very effective. It actually hooks up really well. Like I have videos of me just doing burnouts and being stupid and people are like, well, that thing would be fast if it would ever hook up. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I have dry rotted free tires on from people because I just like doing thousand foot burnouts. Like yeah. I don't want to do that on $300 tires. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, but I have Mickey's, uh, Mickey Pros on it and it, it cuts a one five sixty foot no problem at the track, which is mm. really good for a street car. Wow. So what you're saying is basically a Hellcat is no match for the color. Oh yeah, yeah, it would, it would, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're two different vehicles, but yeah, it would, it would mock, mock so, most so, of them easily. So what's next? You just briefly touched on, on, you know, a lot of people asking you about, oh, uh, you know, maybe you should do another motor, but have you even thought about it? Or you, do, you, do you think that you're hitting the, that, that uh, margin where it's kind of like reaching the, its end uh, before you start to build? I think I'm getting motor? closer to that, yeah. Uh, but what I keep finding out is I make mistakes and that's why the motor breaks. Mm -hmm. Cause that's why people used to think the limit of these engines was five, 600 horsepower. Right. And now like that's, a, people are like, why, why are you even going to do it if you only want to make that much? Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's a, like I was pissed off because the car wouldn't like, like I broke, I think my lower ring lands are broken now in a couple cylinders and I could not make over 750 tire. And I was severely disappointed. And it's funny to think that that's someone's like, life end goal is to have a 700 and i'm like i mean it's, it's different it's different from with what i do and from what i've uh you know i'm jaded i've become used to it yeah. and i'm used to that car making the truck as it is makes 750 tire on wastegate on 14 pounds yeah and i'm like uh, that's a good start for where this project wants to go 750 is a good start so when i ended there at the end of the night i was like yeah you know yeah. i'm back to the start again <laughs> yeah i was annoyed so, and, and so the uh, Sloppy Mechanics uh, Dino Day is coming up soon. I think it's May the next May 7th, I think. You can search for it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Is the official so, date. But are I you going to have the truck there? or Probably, sure. Yeah, yeah gonna... well, every now and then. Sometimes I don't bring them to the Dino Day. I'd say most Never of the time I don't. To the I'm worried about people messing with it. And then uh, <clears throat> I usually just bring my Kia because I have to pack so much stuff into it. And it's hard right, to right. put into the single cab. Uh, we end up bringing shirts drinks like stuff to sell the megaphone like all of my supplies you gotta bring the megaphone it's 55 with the baby in the back you're never gonna get 328 i think the windshield wipers knock a couple off i don't think it's gonna spin it was off don't worry about that one don't even worry so yeah, it's a crucial piece it of the whole to yell at everybody so everyone can hear you. Yeah, without you have no voice at the end of the day if right, you right. if you didn't have it. So so you don't have anything in mind right now. The, the the main goal is to finish pushing the LS motor and figure that out, but you don't have anything in mind as far as what's next. Or another type of engine that you've uh, uh, had the, the need to play with yet? Or? Uh, well, I've done I've done Honda builds, and I think we're gonna do one this summer just for fun, like okay. super super stupid cheap. Mm -hmm. So more we'll you know we'll go more into that. But I've built uh, two D series Turbo Civics before, where I bought like two really cheap pistons and rods. You know, made three hundred horsepower with them to the mm -hmm. tire, and it's a one point five single cam with like a throttle body like this big. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that stuff's always fun, and I like learning that stuff too. One thing that's always appealed to me is like the the inline six cylinder Toyota motor. We've thought about putting those in something, and my buddy Corey, that's building the Hellcat motor Coronet right now, mm. he has a 91. He's putting a Hellcat motor in. It's a Hellcat short block with a 13 Charger filler top end heads parts, wow. and with a turbo with a 4L80E and a Ford Explorer rear and a 69 Dodge Coronet. Mm. It has that Turbo LS earlier this year, but he decided he would go for it and just do the Dodge thing because the same thing. He's like, you know, you don't want to learn everything you can about LS and nothing else. So, right, right. and similar thing happens to me. I'll get burned out a little bit sometimes. And like I built a Turbo Civic or whatever else. Uh, some of that stuff appeals to me. He's gonna build, he has a 91 Tempest, which is like a four door GTO. And he wants to put a 2J in that and he already has a Power Glide. Mm. So he just, he wants to do that. Uh, I don't really have anything on like my radar. Like I might, stuff might just hit me one day and I'll be like, oh yeah, cool. But part of the issue that I have is, since I know so much about tuning LS motors, I will want to dive into something and I'll find out the support isn't there and I'll get disinterested. I'll be like, right, ah. Because right. I mean, DLS is a lot more popular and- Yeah, uh, literally people are, and... there's like 40 standalones I could go buy right yeah, now, yeah. ship them all to my house, yeah.
But it's <laughs> just such a capable, small, I mean, you can put- It's physically so small. It, it's hard to say, yeah, I'm gonna walk away from that. It's yeah, just kind of difficult to do. It is. You you have to be ready for an uphill battle yeah. with anything so, else. So if I were to tell you, like, oh, and by the way, uh, we have uh, the uh, the uh, Corvette uh, C5 here, because I was trying to find a truck, uh, you know, to match uh, the, the Colorado, but I think this is the closest thing with the LS motor that I that I can find. So I figure for Matt, we put the Corvette here. <laughs> but uh, so if you, if I were to like have let's say like a like a GTO, you know, like the uh, well, uh, 06 or whatever that year was before yeah. they had the the, uh, the, uh, the different cams in it. Yeah, well, I think the 05 is the LS1, and the 06 they put the LS2 in because the car is just bigger and heavier than they thought it would be, yeah. and the LS1 was just not powerful enough for that, so they started putting LS2 in. But uh, so, if, so if I were to take that that um, that car and, and I wanted to like make let's say like 800 to the wheels with the LS2 in it. Well, yeah. well, the Either LS2 one. you have to like build it up, right? Or can no, you handle it? No, both. Really? Yeah, the LS2 is way better. The LS1 has skinnier rods. It has Gen 3 style rods in them. Okay, okay. I'd have, you'd have to look it up on the internet. Also, uh, in the sloppy wiki, it shows the difference between the rods. Uh, they started transitioning to the LS2 style rod. Mm -hmm. They went from like a skinnier rod with a pressed on piston to a floating wrist pin and a heavier, beefier connecting rod. Mm. So I, f I find that the limit, like anything over 550 through an auto or like 650 through a stick shift, you're rolling the dice, the rods can come out. And, but a gen four rodded engine like my six liter, that's, the same, that's an LS2 style rod. So if you have the LS2, you could easily go to 800 horsepower. Specifically, if you have stick shift, you'll make much higher percentage to the tire. So if your goal is 800 tire and you have the stick shift car, pretty easy. Really? Yeah, you could buy like a, there's companies that sell, I would say like just for an easy 800, you could buy, cause that car doesn't really bode well for custom fabrication, like the front end and everything isn't that, it's not like a Fox body where you just have like a cavern to drop stuff in. Right, right. You could buy a a ECS, and a whole bunch of other like Novi 2200, the Novi 2200 is a beast, like the blower. You could just literally bolt that onto the front of the motor and on low boost with like a cam, easily clear seven, 800 tire through a stick shift. Wow. It's completely stock engine, pump gas, pump gas meth. Injectors and all that and just. Not the stock injectors, but yeah, like you upgrade a little that. bit of a fuel system upgrade. The stock clutch is probably gonna go by the wayside. Right, right. I think they, the LS9 clutch will go pretty far. I've tuned a lot of cars with 500, 550, 650 tire with the LS9 clutch. Mm -hmm. And then the other one, uh, I did a Corvette earlier this year and it made 714 with like a OE clutch. It wasn't the stock Corvette clutch, but it was a, another like drop in cheap. Wow. So how much would I need in parts? You need, you know, the turbo and some type of header set up and stuff too. Yeah, for sure the header would be cheaper, but it would be more custom fab. Mm. You, it, it would probably take and then tuning on the top clutch of that. and like everything, yeah. But it's not that difficult. You're, you're looking saying. to spend like four or five and like a drop-in blower kit. For some of those cars, it's easier. Just you because blower that you just, you literally, it's just some bolts and a weekend. Yeah. Like a custom fab turbo kit would, a lot, you, spend a lot more. you would have a huge range. You could turn your boost up and down easily. Like the blower, you just kind of, you set it up. But for a lot of those horsepower applications, the blower is simpler for a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to get into like the full on like if they had my truck for a weekend, they wouldn't want to deal with all the stuff. Right, right. But the other people, like, I see a, I see a ton of Corvettes with like those A&A &A and ECS kits. Like that's like a problem free. That thing just bolts on on and it works. just makes power. Right. It's more expensive, but that's like, uh, for if, if you were like, I just want to get into 800 horsepower right away, I'd be like, buy a big blower. Mm. Yeah. So, so are you and, looking into uh, doing uh, more work or are you trying to focus more on tuning or engineering or? So where, where sloppy mechanics going next? Uh, what since so many people are interested in like having me do stuff, I don't. I'm not a shop, and I don't have insurance or space to work on stuff other than my garage. What I started doing was uh, tuning classes, and then people were like, "Well, they can't make it to the tuning classes." So now I'm getting like a video series together, and I'm selling them on uh, Vimeo on demand. Mm -hmm. You can buy the videos, and it'll teach you how to use like. I have one HP Tuners video up now. I wanted to get like five up before I started pushing it. And I just want to show people how to do it themselves. Because I don't, basically the, the issue is, is when you, if I touch someone's car or tune someone's car, I'm married to it. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it misfires one day. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like when you go to a mechanic, like people make those mechanics memes and they're yeah, like, yeah. ever since you touched my car, <laughs> ever since you touched my brakes, my AC doesn't work now yeah, or right. like it's unrelated. A relationship, yeah. So it starts to, and that's just, I, you know, it's not my job and I, I don't support that stuff. So I don't want to get into that. But teaching people, you know, teach a man to fish mm -hmm. is much more attractive to me. And then also like in the, what is slot mechanics and why do I do what I do? I explain how, uh, when people come back and they're like, I've never talked to you, I've never done whatever, but I read your stuff for two years and I swap my old carbureted monster out to a Turbo 5.3 and I drive to the track and go low tens yeah. and I have no issues. Like I've learned from everything you've showed me and I, it didn't cost me anything. Me myself, yeah. Yeah, so, and also to like make it more worth my while, I wanted to put a lot more like production work into doing screen capture and showing how to use the software suite. And I want to do start doing stuff for Megasquirt too, but that's that's pretty much like what I would like to do. I don't, uh, I have a good job and it's nice to have the separation between the two. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people that have made cars their job and then they hate cars and well, everything is a mess. Time, and, yeah. yeah. And then people like, cars are a hobby. They don't need, like if, if they run out of money that you're the first person they stop paying. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, I don't want to pay for this car. Or, right, you know? right. So that's, that's the whole. There's complications in the business, yeah, that you have to deal I with. I see my friends dealing with that and I don't want to start to establish like a giant business situation yeah. like that or deal with it. Yeah, so one of the things that I, that I was uh, talking to you about because, uh, you know, we've had uh, some, we did some tuning on my car at your dyno. And so a lot of people talk about, you know, the 7Ms and how they're, they're you know, junks and this and that. Just and blown take head it out, throw it out and, kind you know, of thing, yeah. And, oh, go 2J, go 1J and, you know, so um, what, what would you say to people like that? Oh, you know, 7Ms are junks and just throw them out and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> It all depends. I think people are quick to like bandwagon and that's, it's funny statement coming from me because of the LS craze thing. Yeah. But I think a lot of people are like, I mean, as far as what I've seen from yours and I've gone to the Texas super meet and some other stuff and I've seen some seven M's really fly. I think they get a bad rap from like people that don't know how to tune them or don't know how to machine them correctly for right. like yours has pistons, rods and stuff. Uh, I think just a lot of people, just like Hondas, a lot of people are like, well, Hondas are junk. Well, there's people going sevens with front wheel drive Hondas. They can't be yeah. that bad, yeah. you know, but it's, it's, there's a, there's a steep decline to where like a lot of people are doing it wrong and people see that more than they see people doing it right. And that's just one of those situations where the 2J is more popular. It is more capable, I think, right out of the box. So people were using it and big name people were doing it and they were, Part of the issue you got to watch in the industry is people might push something because it costs more, because they can sell you more. It's more profitable. A lot of people don't want to build something that's cheap to sell you cheap parts to right. be stuck at a income bracket for right. their. So if people see a 2J and they start making crazy products and they're like, we're going so fast because we have a bill at this and we have all this crazy shit and here you can buy it from us. Right, right. So you got to watch that agenda. And I think yeah. that's another reason why people like sloppy mechanics is because I'll be like, you can use total junk. I completely agree with your comments. The 2J is certainly more capable. It was built to be more capable. Yeah. Newer technology and the whole thing, but that doesn't mean that the old uh, 7M or older 7M, it, it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a, a paperweight. But you know, some people see it that way. So I'm gonna be making a video later on to, to address some issues that most the people 7M have. versus 2J. No, 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 not that one. I don't oh. want to get into that fight because I, you know, I, I think they're both great. <laughs> just, just the one about the 7M and talk about you know, a little bit about that. So, what do you think about Miguel's garage? Well, there's less stains in the floor than my garage. <laughs> there's less work happening here. That's yeah. why. <laughs> it's certainly, it's certainly cleaner. I keep thinking about doing some sort of epoxy on mine, but I can't yeah. stop working on stuff long enough yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I try to keep it clean a little bit, but, uh, you know, every now and then, you know, it gets a little dirty, but that's okay. I'm, I'm a little neat freak. You know, I, I try to keep things because yeah. it bothers me not to. Uh, everyone has their thing. I have OCDs too, but it's I, not. I would love to just like be able to like do make a stuff. mess and yeah. Make it go. Yeah. I'm the same way with, even though the LS stuff sometimes looks like trash, uh, I, I want things to be a certain way in the engine bay because I know that like they might lead to other people are like, ah, you can do that. And I'm like, well, that leads to temperature issues and space problems and, blah. you know, I'm like, that's our whole road where you're you're giving yourself five negatives for one positive. And my, my brain, like, can't, uh, like, argue with people. I'm yeah. like, why? Yeah. Why did you do that? And they're like, I don't understand your hostility. And I'm like, 
three months from now, when you're burning all your fucking plug wires off, you're gonna understand why I'm angry about this. <laughs> cool. Matt, thank you very much. Uh, sure. Guys, make sure you subscribe to Matt, follow, follow my channel as well, comment below. And we'll be including the link uh, to, to the video you just commented. To what learn is more sloppy, about yeah. Exactly. Cool, man. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah. See you around. Yep.